Hello, my name is Ron Halbrigger. I'm the technical advisor for Legendary Auto Interiors, and I want to welcome you to Legendary Studio. Today, we'll show you the proper way to install new foam and seat covers. I'll start by showing you the tools and supplies needed for the job. Then, after a quick teardown of your existing upholstery, I'll go through a step-by-step -step process where we'll provide all the information you need to complete the job yourself. When we're finished, you'll see why Legendary is the number one choice for enthusiasts, restorers, and collectors worldwide. There really is a difference. So let's get started. Okay, some of the supplies we're going to need to get started on our upholstery installation. We've got some 2-inch high-density foam here. That's used on the rear seat bottoms and the front seat bottoms on most of the split benches. Or if you have some kind of custom interior, you'll need to make a set of uh, custom foam. We've got some burlap, and the burlap is used to cover the seat springs so the foam doesn't crush down through the seat springs in between each of the uh, springs. It provides a little firmness and stability. I've got a ruler and a marker here to do some measuring with to keep things symmetrical. We've got some cotton batting here, and we've got a whole big bag of it. And that's how it's sold. All these items can be purchased together or separately from Legendary Auto Interiors. Now this batting is used on most of the backrests on the rear seats and the backrest on the split bench front seats. And we've got some 2 inch felt here and the 2 inch felt is used to provide around the outside edges of the seat bottoms where you get in and out of the car so the seat springs don't wear through the foam and eventually work through your seat cover also. The most important parts of this job as far as the tools go is the hoggering kits. Uh, this squeeze clip they call them. They are the probably the most important tool and what it does, I'll demonstrate one of these for you. It's loads of hog ring into the pliers and actually go one edge of this goes through your seat cover and the other edge goes through your seat frame and just basically squeezes together and crimps it together and that's that's all that holds your seat cover on there. And of course the side cutters or end nippers just in case you're going to need to remove those. So any and all of these can be purchased as a group or separately, whichever items you need. We recommend all of these items for your installation. So uh, we'll get started on our install right away. Okay, today's seat cover installation project is going to be from a 1968 Roadrunner. Now the 68 and 69 Roadrunner satellite GTXs and the Cornettes are basically the same frame. They are a split bench. What I mean by split bench is each of the backrests tilt forward. There's no center armrest in between. And what we're going to do is have our head installer, Randy Brown. Randy, welcome. I don't know. Good, thanks. And we're going to go ahead and take apart the tops. We've already disassembled the old seat cover and the old padding. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the installation of our new, new covers. We're going to start by taking the burlap and covering our seat springs. Now once again this burlap is to be stretched tight and then hog ringed around the entire perimeter and we pull it real tight and it's going to provide a lot of stability for our two inch foam. And that seat foam won't, it, the burlap won't allow it to seep through the seat springs. What we want to do is go ahead and pull it tight side to side first. Now if you at any point decide that you're not comfortable with tackling this job yourself, we can do all the work here at Legendary Auto Interiors also. Just give us a call at 800-363-8804 and we can provide all of your installation needs if you just want it pretty much ready to drop into your car.
Now that our burlap is attached, we're going to go ahead and take that two inch felt that we were talking about and attach it right along the outside perimeter of the seat frame and it's going to provide a little bit of durable padding so when we go to lay our foam on there that edge of the metal here will not wear through your seat foam and consequently your seat cover also. It's one of the important things that they don't do in the new cars now. That's why you see all the new cars, uh, where you get in the driver's side, it's all worn right through the seat cover and the foam is because they don't, they don't do this stuff anymore in the new cars. They should, don't you think, Randy? Absolutely. Now, we were talking about these hog rings earlier also, and the hog rings come with the plier kit that's available. And we like to pick up an extra couple of hundred hog rings just to do the job so you have plenty to work with. Now in this particular seat also, the, the metal is a good time to do any media blasting or painting just prior to this step. Just in case, you you know, depending on what type of restoration you're doing, or if your frame's in, in nice original condition, you can just go ahead and reuse those. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to our tops next. Okay, now might be a good time to just go back through and clean up any jagged edges you have with your burlap. Even though it's not seen, we just like to make a nice professional look to it, even when you're looking underneath the seats here. And we'll go ahead and we'll get started and do the same thing on the tops. Okay, now that we have our front and bottom done, we're going to go ahead and do the backrests. We're going to go ahead and attach the burlap on here and attach it around the perimeter again with the hog rings. The only difference with this one versus the bottom is the backrest don't get that two inch padding all the way around because this is going to have four or five layers of cotton over the top of this burlap. Now Randy's making this look a little easy with the hog ring pliers but real easy to catch your finger with these, aren't they, Randy? Yes, it is. Okay, now that we've got our burlap on here, you can see it provides a lot of stability for our cotton. That way when we have our new seat cover installed on there, it's going to be nice and firm. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the other top and then we'll be ready for our seat installation. Okay, now that we're ready for our foam installation on our seat frame, what we want to do is we've already pre-cut this. We measured out about five inches from the outside perimeter edge so we have enough to fold over and hog ring the foam right to the seat springs themselves. Now this foam can be cut with scissors or a razor blade. You can actually take it and it cuts very easy. Take it a couple times down through if you only have a razor blade to do it. Or you can cut it with a, a good pair of scissors too. 
We did ours with a foam saw, but I know the do-it-yourselfers out there don't have foam saws, so a pair of scissors will do just the trick. Now the corners, you can overlap one another, so you have a nice round edge, so we don't have any bulkiness going through there. As long as you find some seat springs to anchor that foam to, you can pop some hog rings in there and get the job done. Now when we flip this over, you should have a real nice firm pad ready to put your seat cover on. So I think we're pretty much ready for our backrest to put the cotton on the backrest. Now that we're ready for our cotton on our top, what we're going to do is we're going to put four to five layers of cotton over the top of the burlap and wrap it around, put a layer of our scrim to hold it in place, and then the scrim is going to be anchored to the frame here. So you actually have a, a nice secure padded area before we put our seat covers on. So Randy, I'll let you do the honors. Now this cotton, instead of cutting it, you can just pull it apart with your hands nice and evenly. And the cotton that we sell comes in a real big bag like this, so you can put as many layers on there as you feel necessary to fill out your seat cover. We like to, depending on what year model it is, between four and five layers all the time. And this is the same way it's done on a lot of the rear seat backrests also, just on a little larger scale. It's already starting to look really comfortable. <laughs> 